What's up, Blog Tribe people, bloggers, new podcasters are always asking this question, is podcasting still worth it? Honestly, is this going to make me any money? Is it going to be worth my time? This was made even more clear to me last week at a big podcasting conference. 6 a.m. Super early, but I got to drive an hour and a half to the airport. <laughs> Obviously, I met with a ton of amazing podcasters who are doing this right. Yeah. <laughs> Quote, unquote, and a lot of people making a bunch of money. But there were a few new podcasters there that I think have it wrong. And there were actually one or two people I met that hadn't had a podcast yet. I'm not really sure why they were at a podcast movement already. But the point is, uh, they were getting it wrong. So in this little video, I actually want to walk through some of my numbers. I'm going to share exactly how much I've made from my own podcast over four years and clue you into a, uh, a little well-kept secret that I don't hold, I don't think a whole lot of people do. June 2017, I launched the Do You Even Blog podcast and the very first sponsorship was $1. Don't ask me why. I don't want to explain it right now, but I got a dollar from shout out Tom at some blog that's actually not even active anymore. That same month, I reached out to somebody else and got a $50 sponsorship. This is directly paying for my podcast hosting. Didn't quite pay for the microphone, but there we go. $51 month one, woo, celebrate. Over the next two months, I got two more sponsorships. One was $100 and the other one was $50. So that would be, if my math is correct, and it always is, $150 more. Now I want to skip ahead to 2019 where uh, my downloads were a little bit more, not millions, but you know, several thousand an episode. I got a sponsorship for $5,500. Uh, I, I kind of weaseled my way into it. I still think it was worth it for them, but I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really know how this even happened, but there you go. And next up, wait, that's it. No, really, that's all the like direct monetization I've ever done for my podcast. I haven't had any more sponsors. I've never ran like programmatic ads or whatever. That's it. So if my math is correct, and it always is. Uh, okay, actually carry the one. Yeah, okay. $5,701. That's awesome, right? 57 bucks, 100 bucks, who wouldn't want that? Except for the fact that I put hours. I can't even describe how many hours I put in this podcast over the years. And speaking of years, four years. I don't know how much that is over like four years, like per month or something, but it's pretty bad, right? Is podcasting still worth it? Well, let's look at something else before I share my secret. Story time. So it was after this $5,500 sponsorship that I was like, oh, finally, cool. I've made it as a podcaster. Now the podcast is actually making money in like little decent chunks. I never really could line up another sponsor, especially one that was gonna pay me any decent chunk of change to make it worth my time. I had a lot of trouble doing that. But it kinda like prompted a little state of depression and wondering if I should stop my own podcast and really asking the question, what is podcasting for? What is podcasting for? Is it to make money? Is it to reach and help people? Hopefully a bit of both. Is it to grow your blog? some online business in some other way or cultivate an audience and what is podcasting for? So let me brag for a second and say that some of my pod course students, hashtag podcourse.com, hashtag go buy it. Uh, they were able to line up some sponsors, decent sponsors, not a dollar, before they even launched. And this is part of what I teach and I do think it's possible and yada yada, but it's not gonna allow them to quit their jobs. It's not gonna like multiply their blog earnings to get to like that, you know, next level mark, whatever it is, several thousand dollars a month. Podcasting, probably not gonna do that, right? Not necessarily the king of how to make money on the internet, direct monetization. So what is podcasting for? Story time, so I've been a full-time podcaster for like four years, right? Like I've made, I've made plenty of money, I've been able to do this full-time, but wait, I just made, I've only made like 5,700 bucks from the podcast, like direct monetization. What about indirect monetization? In 2009, started my first podcast, uh, it went terrible, and I started my first blog, and I did 40 plus blogs and online businesses. Never never went back to podcasting, really, over like eight years. And I made like a tiny fraction of money and everything failed. 
right? I learned a lot. Don't get me wrong. I've told this story before. And in 2017, I went with the podcast first. I went back to podcasting in 2017, knowing what I knew then. And then, boom. I'm not going to say I blew up because I still haven't blown up for Do You Even Blog. But it started clicking and working. And the money that I make now and the money I've made for the past four years are directly a result of starting the podcast. And no, I don't think I'm being overly dramatic. If I hadn't started the podcast, I would not be where I am today, 100%. Part of that is uh, just right place at right time. Part of that is a, uh, a podcast grows trust faster than any other medium and connection and a relationship with your audience. It does do that. That's a that's a fact, my friend. Uh, but speaking of relationships, I've also built connections, not only with awesome influencers, uh, hashtag Seth Godin was on the podcast, and meeting him was awesome, and several other people, but I've also literally made connections that paid me money for things, both freelance and for my uh, digital products and stuff like that, as a result of having them on the podcast. Relationships have been absolutely key in my current business. And also, I'm going to be really honest with you, uh, I've just gotten a lot of free consulting from people who I otherwise could never have afforded, but you have a podcast and you find them on the podcast and you get them for an hour. Like, I get to talk to Seth Godin for an hour for free and just ask any questions I want. What would that cost if I didn't have the podcast? But imagine that times like 300, right? I've gotten an insane amount of value in indirect monetization in addition to the like $5,700, right? incredible benefits that I have today that I would never have gotten if it hadn't been for the podcast. Okay, so we got it. Indirect monetization. Cool. It's time for my secret. It's time for my secret. But in order to understand it, you have to know what ROI means. Return on investment. It's not how much money you make all the time. It's how much money based on the inputs, the investment in both money and time, right? Is my podcast a positive ROI? from the money I've put into it, invested into it, and the time I've invested into it. So here's my secret. Here's what a lot of bloggers thinking about podcasting think about when they're trying to determine if podcasting is worth it. If you're just talking about direct ROI, the answer is probably not. The answer is probably no, not worth it. But if you're talking about all the indirect monetization and all the other glorious benefits of podcasting, still probably worth your time. The secret is to cut down on all the money and time inputs that go into making a podcast while still getting the same outputs. If podcasting is not so much for direct monetization, but instead for indirect monetization, amplifying and multiplying all the other parts of a online business, an online business, a online business, Hashtag grammar Nazis hit me up in the comments. If that is what podcasting is for, relationships, connectivity, free consulting, uh, building trust with an audience fast, the higher ROI you shall get if the lower investment. So my secret is I don't spend hardly any time on my podcast. I mean, hardly any time. I'm not looking for sponsorships. I'm not looking to spam a bunch of affiliate links in my podcast description and grow my audience all that quickly, I don't actually care. I love my audience for the podcast, but I'm in this for the relationships and the connecting with other people. And if I'm being honest, the, uh, <laughs> the free consulting. But in order to make that worth my time, I have to not spend a lot of time on it. So I've set up systems and hacks and processes, and I've figured out how to edit and produce my podcast faster than 99% of other podcasters, period, because I want there to be a positive ROI on my money and on my time. This is my secret and something that nobody believes is possible. A, a super streamlined, fast, and speedy approach to podcasting while still having it be good and valuable to an audience and giving all those benefits. It can be done. That's my dirty secret. You can choose to believe it or not. And a uh, hashtag segue alert. So in the description below the video, I'll put my link to my free as in beer podcast training where I'm gonna be highlighting some of the tips to do this quickly and easily and how to get those amazing benefits with a much lower time and money investment. That's my secret sauce of podcasting. I truly believe most creators should have a podcast. They just shouldn't actually spend that much time and energy on it. So go check the links in the description. I'll also put a link down there to PodCourse if you just want the fast track. You just want me to give it to you. You just want the benefits. You can pay me money for PodCourse. I stand by it 1000%. Thank you guys for watching. I love you.
do even vlog drive. Happy podcasting and high ROI activities. And I'll see you next time. Adios. Did I get it? Yeah, I got it. High ROI YouTubing.